Okay, so here we have another classic. Bevels, but we call them chamfers inside of, um, most of the time we call them chamfers inside of 3S Max, but I just call them bevels. So um, if you go to your edge over here, again in your modeling tools, if you click on the mode, you have your chamfers. By the way, maybe a bit late that I'm saying this, but all of these tools you can also find down here if you want. I just never use this side because it's too much scrolling. So you have your chamfer. If you click on the chamfer once, you can click and you can drag. However, um, it often applies like default settings, so you will need to change settings because in the latest 3ds Max, here see, uh, in the latest 3ds Max, the chamfer always adds like an extra segment. So what it does is it basically allows you to draw and I believe normally, okay, see, that, that's why I don't tend to use it. Basically what I tend to do is I tend to go into chamfers and go into chamfer settings. Because in here, I can very precisely set this. And you also have segments over here. So the chamfer settings are actually quite extensive. So let's go over this. These are often the default settings that you just saw, the one. If I set this to zero, and then, for example, press OK, the next time I'm using the quick chamfer, it will also abide to those settings. It will always remember your settings, basically. And uh, it will just try to play around with that. However, let's uh, you know this. Let's go over our settings, shall we? So, what do we have here? We have our just our density. We have our segments that we want to place in between. If you set this to zero, it will just be your classic bevel. So let's set this to like a few. You have over here, this is your um, bumpiness. Uh, bumpiness? I shouldn't call it bumpiness. Um, curve. It's your curve. If I set this to 0.5, it means it just tries to go for like a nice 90 degree curve. You can also go inwards. See? So you can also go minus 0 0.5, and this will give you like an inward curve. Uh, within this, um, let's see, does these pieces are basically based upon normal direction, but they don't do much. Um, so I tend to not touch those. And I don't know what these settings are. Oh, these settings just remove the faces, and these settings remove everything but the faces. And this is basically automatic smoothing. So this is just our smoothing groups that if we set this lower, it will not smooth in certain areas. And you can like turn that on and off and stuff like that. So that is it for the chamfer settings basically. And like that you can just very easily add some chamfers. Now what 3S Max has is it also has a bevel tool actually and that's why it's a bit confusing. Um, if you go ahead and you go to face select, you all of a sudden have a bevel tool. Now your bevel tool is slightly different because it's basically extrude and bevel. If I go in here, see, it is very basic, but I still want to show you. I never use it myself, but you can extrude and you can bevel. I personally tend to just extrude this and I tend to select my mode. And then um, if you hold shift and select on edges, you can um, convert your selections based to, or uh, you can convert your selections to something else. And then I tend to like chamfer it. And like this, you can very quickly uh, add like a very nice looking chamfer or you can do whatever you want. Maybe I want to have like multiple segments and just push this out, stuff like that. And um, yeah, you can even keep this as like a normal cube if you just want to place some edges around corners, for example. So that's why I use this. Now, a really cool trick that, um, again, something that not many people seem to know that I tend to use. Let's say you have a complicated mesh and you have a swift loop. You basically place this swift loop, let's say, over here. And you say, okay, I need to split this swift loop up. I cannot use a connect because uh, my connect, I would then need to go in here, do like a connect, do like a double connect, move it down, and then try to move it. But sometimes if your models are too complicated, you simply cannot do that. If you select this edge and the edge is on a flat face, so it's not on a corner, you can actually chamfer the edge. And when you chamfer the edge, it will always perfectly split it into two. See, it will just perfectly split it into two pieces, like you can see over here. And with this, you can also add extra segments in between, which is really great. Um, the only thing is that, of course, the boldness and everything, it doesn't work anymore because it's not on a corner. So I just want to show you the tool. I use it very often, and I think it is very handy to know. So that was our beveling and our chamfers.